going, coach? Uh, <laughs> I'm a little wiped. Uh, me too, dude. Yeah, I didn't do down. anything. <laughs> but hey, it is 420. It is Thursday. We're trying our best to be consistent. This is the Just Show Up podcast brought to you by Crushing Iron. No, this is, and we do, we appreciate you listening and your patience today for those of you who love to listen to it immediately on our pretty much regularly scheduled uh, release day, which is Monday and Thursday. But yes, this is the Crushing Iron Podcast, episode 291. Uh, is that correct? I don't think so. I think it's... it's well, well, we'll roll with we'll roll with 293. 292, I think, will get, yeah, get you. Yeah. Brought to you by Cold Starbucks Coffee. Ooh, are you <laughs> the... just now stepping on a cold one? Uh, <laughs> yeah. I uh, just, uh, I had a little bit, and then we went over to the lab and rode, and I kind of forgot about it, and it was just sitting in my counter. So I'm like, you know, four oh. o'clock in the afternoon, just drink a little cold coffee. Oh. I was That's say the life left, of a triathlete. It is, man. I was going to say, if you left it in your car, it's probably even hotter than the, than how it started. Oh, um, that or that mug. What was that mug? That Yeti mug I have. The Yeti mug. <laughs> it's you just that would be on, my whole car might have been on fire if that, I left that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but yes, this Thursday is also our first day of camp, uh, which is why we were a little bit delayed. And I got to give uh, props and a thanks to Mike. He's been super patient with my schedule the last 24 hours. Is we don't live here in Nashville anymore. We live in Chattanooga, and our camps are in Nashville because we have such such a great uh, environment to train on. The locations are just awesome. Uh, we'll probably eventually do some camps in Chattanooga, but right now Nashville has uh, got so many great opportunities. And so getting there with getting here and in town with Hayden, and he was a little rebellious yesterday when it came to nap time. Uh, <laughs> so we didn't get it out Wednesday. And then obviously we started camp today at 6 a.m. And we went and rocked and rolled until around 2.30. Uh, in and at the lab, we had an open water swim session this morning, which is awesome. Took a little break, got to chat, got to know each other a little bit better at Starbucks. Uh, Some of us finished our coffee, some of us didn't, like Mike. And then we headed over to what we call the lab, which is an abandoned airfield, uh, airstrip 1.25 miles around if you hug the outside, 1.2 if you hug the corners, and uh, or hug hug the inside, rather. And we spent the afternoon out there. Uh, We talked a little bit about nutrition, not a ton, but we did a cycling and a running workout, so... This is us. It is now 420, and we are making sure that we get this in because, hey, we promised to be consistent and get these in twice a week, and they're definitely not going to happen tomorrow or the weekend because life just, and the camp just gets busier. But, hey, like we said, we appreciate your patience, uh, and if it's your first time joining us, we're right on time because <laughs> we yeah. can't be late. But, uh, again, this is the Crushing Hour podcast, and we, we talk, obviously, about triathlon and life, how they intersect, and everything in between, and uh, cover a variety of topics. You can always hop back in and dive in the archives. Like we said, 292 uh, total episodes dating back almost three years, October. And uh, yeah, that is what we got. Uh, I have a topic, as you know, but you know when we when we have camp, we have we had our welcome dinner last night. We have about you know 25, I think 26 athletes from all over. I mean, from Jersey to California and everywhere in between. We've got athletes that come in these camps, and it's just awesome. And, uh, you know, we always have like takeaways. So I didn't know before I hopped into mine, if you had any, um, you know, thoughts of, uh, immediate thoughts about, uh, yesterday or, or, uh, last night or this morning before I hopped in. No, I think just the general thoughts of how we keep having these camps and this is what, what are, is this our like ninth camp or eighth or something? We've had a few. Uh, it quite is, a few, three I mean, a year for three years almost. Draft. This is our ninth one of just just triathlon camps, not counting our swim camps and our our team run camps. But yeah, this is this is our ninth triathlon yeah. camp. And you know, it's just I guess just the continuance of awesome people that show up that are cool and supportive, and it, it's just uh, I don't know. It keeps happening, and I'm hosting three great people here at my house, and uh, while well, they're being a little loud right now. <laughs> They don't care about I'm you. Not they used to roommates, no. <laughs> yep. But no, everybody's cool, and that—that's all I have to say about campus. It's just always inspiring to to see how people want to come and get better, and just you know, don't bitch about stuff and whatever it is. You know, they're curious and they ask questions and they want to learn and they understand that this is a process. You know, mm-hmm. and it takes time, and some people are at different stages of that game, and. And everyone is kind of willing to share both ways on the spectrum. And 
I think it's a, I think it's a great learning experience, and I think it's a confidence boost for everybody. Usually, that's yeah, usually what that's, happens. That's yeah, definitely my favorite part of camp. Um, and obviously, we're we're just kind of the first day into this one. But again, like you said, it's, I mean, one of my favorite things about about camps, and then one of my favorite things about coaching is. Because people always ask, well, what kind of athletes do you coach? Do you only coach high level athletes? Do you ever coach beginners? I'm like, I coach everybody. Like, you know, I, 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 I'm not in this. I'm a relationship guy. I mean, while I, while performance is important and you getting the best out of you is obviously what you hire me for. Um, I work with all different kinds of abilities, from super beginners to um, elite and even former professionals. So, I mean, I, I got it all. Uh, and camps always attract the same type you know it's all it's it's that's why i love it it's pretty much the same attitude um but mostly it is you know any of same attitude same approach same not not always same personality obviously but you know same characteristics i guess is a good way to put it but totally different um athletic backgrounds and Mm -hmm. needs and wants and that's why i think it's just so fascinating um and, you know, today, like you were talking a little bit about, you know, everyone's, you know, the process of getting better and all. And I, you know, I had a really awesome, I won't name this person's name, but I had a really awesome talk earlier today with an athlete that that's here in camp. And the story that this athlete was sharing was just like it, again, like that's my favorite thing about camp is you meet so many people from so many places and you hear so many stories. Mm, you know, like I think yeah. sometimes we, I think, I think sometimes like we get, we get calloused to or numb to like the draw to performance and, and competition and PRs. And, and so in the course of this conversation, conversation with this athlete was how I, I was just struck by and just reminded so often about how many times and, and I think whether it's life and, and business and relationships um, that we, that we oftentimes let performance dictate the process. Mm. But most importantly, what we're trying to find out is our purpose. Because I think a lot of us, I mean, you know, I've been there before, I think most athletes have, like, you get into the sport with a purpose, with a, with a why, with a, with a this is a, a genuine want to do this, whether it's complete a full distance, whether it's complete your first travel, whether it's to lose weight, whether it's to take your life back, whether it's to prioritize things, whether it's to set a good example for your kids. But then along the way of that, your, of, of the purpose of which you started and, and within that process, you get kind of sucked into that, you know, performance vortex that triathletes love to like latch on. You know, their identity is attached, and their to the, the numbers. positivity behind what they're able to accomplish. Their numbers, and it's it's you know it's it's like people you know it's like people's you know headline on on their you know Facebook profile like when they got you know something I guess something wrong with that, but it's just an example of the or maybe even a symptom of how much we've been relegated to just assigning success with performance and i just think it's i just think it's gotten to a point to where it's just total bullshit and i was talking to this athlete and and i think obviously performance is a great thing you know i think pushing yourselves is a wonderful thing try to find out and, and figure out what you can do to be better and push yourself and be uncomfortable and and figure out exactly what you've got because so many people tend to underestimate underestimate themselves, you know? And just in the course of talking to this athlete and listen to all the different things that this athlete has gone through and the ups and the downs and the DNFs and the purpose and but that they've kept coming back. Yeah. And basically just like just not giving up. And it seemed like has definitely seen some success, but in the course of this conversation, just realizing how uh, how many also injuries and frustrations this athlete has had, yet here they are at a camp far away from home, not knowing a single solitary person. I know, that's crazy. And it blows my mind. And I would be lying to you, totally lying to you if I sat here and said, oh yeah, that'd be totally be me. No, it wouldn't. I'd be <laughs> terrified. You know, it's not like, that wouldn't. But just like the... I think that attitude and that personality just speaks volumes, not just about this person, but about how how just um, – that's not humbling isn't the word, but just how great it is to see someone's outlook and perspective that I don't care what you people think. I don't care what about these past – you know, obstacles or, or pitfalls or or missteps or, you know, whatever you want to call it or, you know, not, not doing what I was set out to do. I'm still here. Yep. When most people would have just packed it in, 
this is too hard or you know one of my favorite oh it's just not meant to be you know and it's just because because again like we again label ourselves by PRs and performances and did I qualify for this and I qualify for that or have you done an Ironman have you done a 70.3 has that like as if you hadn't then like you're not a good triathlete or have you ever you know if you DNF then it's the end of the world you can't ever do races ever again you should be ashamed of yourself we've like gravitated towards that like that terminology as a indicator of how athletes should judge themselves and be successful and we've talked about this on so many podcasts before it's like the success lies in the journey. Yeah. The success lies within the process, and you will, you will never remember those PR workouts. You will remember the things you, the people you met, the lessons you learned, and you'll sit there and look in the mirror and, and realize the person that you've become and how you got there. And I just think we, I just think we lose sight of that sometimes. And I just think it's a great. Um, Camp always does that for me, but just hearing the story, I was just like insanely impressed by this athlete and had nothing to do with athletic achievement just yeah. the relentlessness of i'm not done yet i still want to figure this out this is you know, it, it's, it was like this unapologetically this is my purpose yeah and i and i absolutely love that well, dude, man, I was thinking about this a lot. You know, we this last week when we were in Chattanooga, remember there was a section of the discussion that we were all having when you're talking about the beginner to intermediate to advanced mm-hmm. triathlete and like that process and and how that kind of unfolds for different people. And it's pretty similar for a lot of people. And it, you know, along the way, let's say there's three of those sections: beginner, intermediate, advanced, and along that continuum, there's like thousands of points on there that kind of you know just unfold and you don't really and it's not always recognizable and you might you know you might be advanced in certain things but intermediate in others and how you learn you know like how the difference like you always talk about being at the pointy end and getting on the podium and things like that what that really takes is like quite substantial and we hear a lot of stories about you know yeah this was his first race and he qualified for Kona or like, you know, those type of outliers or they've only been a triathlon for a year and a half and look what they're doing or blah, blah, blah. But you know, those are so small. And I think 95% of the other triathletes in the world are kind of stuck somewhere else, you know, in that big pool. And, and you just keep hearing all these, you know, like that's sort of the world we're in, right? Is like, Mm -hmm. they just decided they were going to swim around you know the the big island of Hawaii or whatever. You know, <laughs> in a you know speedo with like no goggles or you know it's like right. people just doing that kind of stuff all the time. But we forget like how many struggles there are along the way and how difficult it is for us to do these kind of things. You know, like I've always been a video person, for example, and I've been picking up my still camera. I've been taking a lot of pictures. And man, you know, I've been around this kind of shooting video and photography for years. But it's funny how little I know. And we were talking today about, uh, you know, or last night, some of the guys were here about how the more, the older you get, the the kind of less you know sometimes. <laughs> it's like the more you get into this sport, the more difficult it becomes because you start realizing what you don't know. You know, you're not blindly going into it and all of a sudden, you know how that ignorance is bliss sometimes. And uh, mm-hmm. this process of... Yeah, that's- being a triathlete is so interesting because of that it's, it really is kind of a parallel for learning how to live you know on some level i mean because it's listen like that why listen diets most diets are six well they're not successful but m- most people love to assign themselves to a diet or a religion or a political affiliation or a team or whatever it is not so much because they're deeply involved or deeply they have this like longing belief or trust or like really 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 like um, intellectual understanding of everything. It's it's about like wanting to place an identity on yourself. Right. Like you want you want to align yourself with this and other people. Do you feel within a community? A community is great. I mean, we obviously have a community. And I love it, but it's so much easier than the journey of self-discovery you know and it's like that because that's what's that's what's so hard about it 
And and like kind of what you said about oh the athlete that it was their very first time to qualify. Like guess what? For some people and their abilities and how their life is and what they've gone through, that might be nothing to them. So when you look at other people and you place your goals and your dreams and you attach them or, or you pick them up and then place them into someone else's life, they, they might not even care. To them, that, that might be insanely underachieving. And then when you place it back on your life, you could also you could at the same time being at, with, with what you have and what you have to deal with and your history and everything else, you could be like incredibly successful. But then you look at other people and you look at other abilities and like, like I was talking to this athlete, uh, the stories about and and I was like, are you still you're still nervous? And they're like, oh, I'm just uh, yeah, I'm just slow. And I was like, well, slow is relative. And then she made a joke. She's like, well, you know, I'm relatively slow, <laughs> and, and, which was funny. But it was just like, who cares? And you know, and, and I get it. Like there are so many like f- Facebook groups that are just like intoxicated with. I want to show you how great I am and make you look like you're like can't even hold a candle, and how like we've a I think people have come to accept that which it shouldn't be acceptable, but that like who cares, like that's why and I said like unapologetically like relentless about her own process and her own purpose. I, it was again like I I haven't always had that. I've had it. I have it right now uh, in a lot of ways. I haven't, definitely haven't always had it. I would have packed it in if I thought for just one second. You could see like a a minuscule, like unnoticeable chink in the armor. I'm like no thanks. Like I, I'm not willing to put myself out there though. Because what what will you think? And then um then like reality is like you're probably not going to think anything because you really don't care. And so like we per, we get in our own way based on what we think you see. And I just I think it's such a refreshing outlook to have. And I just when you get to this time of the year and, and athletes. Again, triathlons a year-round thing, but this time of year, when people are again, are like trying to put all these pressures on themselves to live up the hype. And again, like I think some of it we do to ourselves, maybe not on purpose, but kind of in in the flow and the ebb and flow of the race season. As we we post on social media a lot, and we do that because we're excited, and we do it because we want you to know. But then, like with that pressure mount, it's like, well, crap. Like well, now, what happens if like uh, I get out there and doesn't go for it when everybody's going to know? And then what if they think? You know, first of all, if they're your friends and they love you, they're not going to care. They're going to support you, and then you should understand it's about the process and it's about who you became. Like I think that's just so many times like what we forget. You take you take you know Joe Try, who you said who picked up triathlon nine months and then qualified for Kona. You think like he has the greatest life ever, and then you take you know Timmy Try, who has been just grinding it out for like three to four years. Has had ups, has had downs, has had the great, has had the you know the good, the bad, the ugly, everything in between, successes, failures, injuries, comebacks, you name it, he's had it. Whose journey would you trade? Like the end result is massively different. Again, placed on this just like thing that we've made like the holy grail of all life, right? And like he's somebody's like, oh my god, they qualified for Kona. Like you're pointing in the background, like it's you know uh, some like. To, like LeBron James or you know whoever like mm-hmm. some like you're like I can't even look that person went to Kodak can you believe it and you're like yeah I guess what they still pee and poop just like the rest of us are a human being but <laughs> but when you talk about like how you we we assign like success like the person who's been grinding it out for like three to four or five years and I've gone through all those things like the again not to say that like qualifying for Kona is like a bad thing or it should be look differently upon i'm just saying there's massive appreciation to be had looking through those in two lenses and not just a lens of one is of success and one is he's just never done it Mm -hmm. or he hasn't gotten there yet because i would argue with you that the guy who's just grinded it out has learned infinitely more about himself that he'll be able to apply to his life than the other person um the other person might find hey i'm a natural this was too easy bye see you later right you know so but we're gonna think the total opposite you know and again like I'm not again. I'm not saying that. Well, it's kind of like what, negative or bad. Yeah, it's sort of like what. It what's impressive is what you do with what you have, you know, and your situation. You know, I think that's kind of it too. It's like, yeah, I mean, if if because on the opposite side of the scale, and it's almost exactly what you're talking about. It's like you see these people all the time, with 
you know, all this God-given talent and these, this ability who never pull it together and never work at it to get it done. And then you see some other people just struggling along the way. And, you know, the, their journey when it overcomes even somebody with a lot of talent is way more impressive, you know, because it's like, it's always hard. It's relative, you know, even with talent or whatever, it's different sorts of struggles and things like that. I think I agree with that. You know, it's just so impressive to see people grind away at this sport because it's, you know, every day it's like, it's like me getting out of bed or something in the morning. It's like, it's not easy <laughs> in the morning, you know, and you just got to keep doing it. You got to keep showing up. And then eventually it starts getting a little bit easier and a little bit easier. And that is the process. Left him speechless. Are you all right, man? Did you, is it? Have you had enough of? <laughs> Shh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was just seeing how long you were gonna do it for. Oh, no, but like, is that really what you're doing? No, no. But, you know, I was just, I was just testing you, man. So. I oh, nice. I got that you got cut off, and I was oh, just going to no, like, no, so this is a perfect I, time for me to take over the podcast. And finally get us the reviews and downloads we deserve. <laughs> <laughs> so I think what you said about being impressive is just spot on. Because, like, like I'll see people who, like, do, to, like, like, Netflix documentaries or think they have, like, all these different skill sets or trades or whatever – and like like I'll use the image I just watched it was that and I watched in person in Chattanooga was like the glass blowing thing, and I just I marvel at it because it to me it's unbelievably impressive, and to them it's like yeah I do this all the time, hmm. you know and like so little things like that are like when I think about how the hell my computer even works, um, like this is like blows my mind but somebody who creates it it's like yeah that's really not a big of a deal, so I think like. When you have you have perspective, and then the lens in which you see it, like makes certain things more impressive than not. And I, th- I do. I think it's a really great way to put it. Um, in that, you know, there are so many different ways to feel. Like, I'm, you know, save it. Save impressive, it. but no, I'm not saying the it. cliche. I know. <laughs> there is. Just- <laughs> There is uh, for a second there. I thought you said Nick Lachey, and I was like, oh, we're not definitely not talking about ninety eight degrees. And that, that was the temperature outside today. Um, <laughs> it is I just think there's so many different ways to see people as total success stories, even though our version of their success, and that's and the, and it's odd enough because that's how we judge ourselves, right? Like so. So many people judge their success based on how other people see us through their own lens and their own reality. And that's how we judge ourselves. So you have like half people is like, oh, that's not really impressive. And they're half is like, oh my God, I can't believe you just did that. When the reality in your own lens might be, A, you might not even know because you're so worried about everyone else's lens and looking through your own. And so I just think there's so many different levels of, of being successful that it's it's so much more complex because of our life, the things we've been through, the I mean, I think I think we've all felt this like to an extent, at least I hope so. Like I'll be driving down the road and you see somebody out just absolutely working it. You know, like running, like you you can you can and we've all seen I think we've all seen people like this because we've been there. It's like like that's probably their first run ever. <laughs> like they're you can tell they're they're trying to get back in shape. Yep, yep. You're like, you go, man, you go. Because it's just so good to see people work hard for something that they don't, they like. That's they're not. That's not going to be a world title again. This is a hobby, right? Like we're not getting paid for this. We pay for this, and I just think there's so many different ways to be successful. And I think we we've done a really poor job of just dwindling it down to only three or four things that are let label people as successful people. You know, people think it's money. Uh, relationships, you know, anything like their version of success, and it, it, it's happiness. And the people who are truly happy have worked their butt off for it, and they have probably this different sense of happiness because they know how hard it's been. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I I remember not too long ago being that guy that you see out there, man, this is his first run or whatever. And I got to be honest, when I see those guys out there, and they're just, <laughs> you know going up a hill and just struggling in this heat and um, and they're you know they're usually wearing like a you know one of those thick t-shirts and you know just that you know that that they 
dug out their running clothes from back in the day or whatever. And it's one of the, and my first thought is always like, yeah, this might be his last run, <laughs> you know, because it's just like, but hopefully not, you know, because I just know how tough it is to, to keep that going. And, and I've seen along the way, and I still see, it's funny that you still see little gains and that's like, I guess what you're saying, and I think this is the key point to everything a lot of times, is you got to be able to recognize those things. Because I think sometimes we sleepwalk through this process too, you know? And we mm. just kind of keep ch- churning things out and churning things out. We don't look back. We don't, you know, yeah, you don't want to look back, whatever. But to be able to recognize these gains, I mean, like if, if I were to look at my journal entry from five years ago to maybe like yesterday for example that's mm-hmm. the kind of thing i need to do how do you do that well that's why i always you know encourage people to journal because you lose track of it and you know like as i'm sitting here today and i'm you know st- i'm struggling you know out in this heat and I, i'm sure a lot of other people were and but the reality of it is is this struggle is nothing compared to what i used to feel you know it's just a different kind of struggle you know and how do you remember that it's it's like you've been callous to the like how good you've got it now, <laughs> you know. Yeah. It's like like gosh, it's like and then you're like you're like oh, I don't have it really that good. And you're like wait a minute, like you look at yourself in the mirror and then you look how things used to be and you're like, dude, this is the life, you know. And then I think I think one of, like some of the healthiest things to realize in in, in your personal life and in um, you know triathlon whatever is like to like. Again, we always talk about kind of staying even. You know, don't get too high, don't get too low. But there's all those are they're always great reminders. They're reminders of why I'm still working and where I've been. And everything else is in the middle. You know, right? You're just trying to move that needle more to where it's better and better and better. So the the next reminder you get of the grade is ju- is even better. You know, and then you keep distancing yourself and distancing yourself. So reminders need to be longer and longer and longer or more, more intense to remind you of how far you come. But it should be a good thing, not a bad thing. Like you shouldn't shy away from it. You should welcome it. Mm-hmm. You know, you should put yourself in situation like like there is nothing greater for me or, or nothing makes me feel more grateful for my life or more humble with my life and more thankful for my life than being reminded about how my life used to be before I got sober. And like the total like mental shift that it kind of like washes over me is just like, what in the heck do I have to complain about? You know, and you like you feel silly. Like looking back, I mean, again, like, yeah, life's never perfect, but when you look back on things and like how far people come, you're like, gosh, you know, but then again, like you go out for a workout if you're in training and you see this glimpse of fitness that you've been like thinking is gone or thinking that you can't achieve or that's just a dream or that's long gone if you're aging. And then you see it and you're like, (laughs) yep, that's why I'm getting back out here tomorrow. You know, I'm still going to get after it. I'm still going to find it because. You know, like, and, and, you know, like climbing Everest has become like oddly cliche now, <laughs> but, but they would tell you, it's like what they're going to remember is like how the effort to get to the top, not once they actually got there. And that's, that's just, it's the journey and it's the people it's it just don't turn around and don't give up, you know, like the, this time of year. And, and again, like forget about a race, forget about your quote unquote season. Because unless, you know, again, time isn't always given, but it's not over. You know, it's not time to retire. You know, it might be time to rearrange and shift things and figure out a new process and figure out how to get there, but it's not over. And just because you keep hitting the same dead end doesn't mean, doesn't mean you're in the wrong car. It just means you're taking the wrong street. Mm-hmm. And I just think it's an important reminder for everybody to, you know, just when you think it's time to throw in the towel, um, you know, something else usually pops up. And I mean, I have athletes that do this all the time. Like the one day that they, they all have a terrible workout. I'm like, secretly, I'm like, sweet. They're about to, have, they're about to have a breakthrough. You know, <laughs> you just don't want to tell them, but it is, it's just, you just got to keep plugging away and you just got to keep showing up. Yeah. And I think another way to talk about process, honestly, is the, it's the moment. So, uh, when we were running the other day in Chattanooga, me, you, and, uh, several other people i was running with uh one of our buddies and we were running a flat you know greenway right 
Mm-hmm. And then we got to, we were, and it was really hurting. And, and it was just, it was a second day in a row. And, and I w- it just wasn't feeling. And then when we got to the downtown area, and then we hit this bridge. And we both almost subconsciously just picked it up a little bit. And when we got to the top of the bridge and when we came over it, we were running faster uphill and we felt better going downhill. And then, you know, so I keep thinking about it in terms of like it, it, that process is always in, in, you know, in process, I guess, in, in moments. And so like when you say Mount Everest or climbing the, you know, you don't remember the peak. Well, I mean, it kind of you do remember it, but it's just a moment, right? Like you're, mm-hmm. all along the way. It's sort of like when you finish an Ironman, you, you know, you look back and you think about the journey, you remember the finish line and that's like an incredible moment but then it's like what happens next right as you get the medal around your neck and then you walk over and then there's another great moment because you hang you know you hug your friends and your family and and it's just like this magical time and then that just keeps going right so it's just like it's like sort of showing up for the next moment all the time Mm -hmm. and not you know we i just was talking about looking back and seeing where you come from but it's kind of always just like being where you're at yep. and then deciding how are you going to get up out of that chair and, and go a little, a little bit further today or something. Yeah. It's a, it's a, yeah, it's a great point about Everest is that it's, you remember the top, but the lessons are how you got, are, are within how you got there. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think that's, that's what we, it's so many times we assign success on the event not the process or the person we became in trying to complete it. Mm-hmm. And I think that's, that's sometimes what gets lost in, lost in the mix. I agree, man. We almost got this podcast lost in the mix of the hectic, crazy camp sc- schedule. But, hey, we did it. It was uh, what I would call a power cast. Um, I do. It, it, again, like this athlete blew me away. And, and I think it's just a great, it's just a great reminder for us all that um, – a just to, you know, they always have that saying of like, you know, don't judge, you know, don't judge a person until you walked a mile in their shoes. You know, it's like don't shift, you know, don't assign success or failure based on, you know, placing your story on someone else's success. And I, I think it's, it's just a great reminder for us all, especially this time of year, and we've placed a lot of pressure on ourselves to succeed and, and do great things. And um, it's a great lesson in life and business and relationships, and obviously triathlon. Um, Big shout out to our frequent listeners as we are super are super thankful that you do listen and you stick around for us uh, and do listen uh, to this 292nd episode that we got out just in the nick of time. And uh, we'll be back next Monday, regularly scheduled programming, right on time-ish uh, if we have that. Um, if you have interest in any of our camps that are going on next year, they're both, I think, a little over halfway full. All of our camps this year sold out. Uh, we would love to have you. It's a great experience. And I will tell you this with the utmost honesty is you will come for the training and what you will learn and the location, but you will come back again for the people. Uh, we, I just, it, every time I'm like, infuses me with more faith in humanity every time we have a camp. Cause I'm like, I keep thinking there's not a lot of awesome people out there. And then we have camp. I'm like, Oh my God, we have like all 26 people on this earth at this camp right now who are all awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just odd. So we'll, we'll try and put a link to that in the show notes if you want more info. And for some reason we don't sneak them in there today, you can always go to crushingiron.com, which is our kind of our one stop shop. It's got info on all of our training camps. We have triathlon and swim camps. And then we also have additional info on uh, coaching and training packages, our swim analysis, blog, video, uh, gear. It's all there. Swing by, check it out. Um, if you follow us on social media, I'm sure we'll be a little more lively than usual. Our usual uh, cricket self, uh, not <laughs> things out there. Uh, I think I don't know. Um, you're in charge of the gram. I I escape. Uh, <laughs> I escaped not crushing Skate the gram a year ago. Um, we'll be on there a little bit on Facebook. And if you want to be a part of the conversation, enjoy what we do. Uh, head over to Facebook, and you can be a part of the conversation. The Crushing Iron group. Just search Crushing Iron. And if you appreciate what we do, or you've got anything useful out of it, which I hope that you have. Uh, always please remember to leave us a review and subscribe on iTunes. Absolutely. And I want to just uh, 
thank everybody. Well, there's been a lot of really nice emails we've been getting lately about <laughs> how the podcast has connected with them and sort of been a part of their journey. And since this is about journey, we'd love to hear about your story. So crushingiron at gmail.com is my email. C26coach at gmail is Coach Robbie directly. So hit him up, hit me up. Let us know how the podcast is kind of been a part of your life or connected with you or whatever and uh we'll get back to you sounds like a plan stan all right man i uh, will see you bright and early <laughs> yeah, see you, dude. all right bye-bye